come. And I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad to be here. So, my talk is going to be how to assess your ketosis by breath ketones. 2012, my doctor said, you got epilepsy for life. Um, that was not an easy thing to get. But what I did get was medication. I got tablets in my hand. Eat them and you'll be fine. But the medication changed my mind. I got a bad person. I was shouting at my kids. I was not a good person to be around. So I had to find some solution to this. And I found something called the ketogenic diet. And I'm sure you biohackers know what this is. It's, well, it's a good breakfast several times a day. So, this wasn't a fix for me for a week or to lose some kilos or, or to fix something. I have epilepsy for life. So I have to find a ketogenic lifestyle to be in ketosis all the time, most of the time. A ketogenic lifestyle is not just about food. It's how you are socially, how you can go out with friends having dinner, how you live, how you, how you work, how you, what kind of supplements you use, what kind of fasting you do. So you have to do a lot. But before we're getting into this, we must straighten out what is ketosis. So, ketosis is a state where your insulin is low and your gly glycogen stores are low too. So, that will tell your liver, start making some energy for my brain. And ketones are a better fuel for your brain than glucose is. So, what's happening is that free fatty acids are released and gets down to the liver, which metabolize them into ketones. Note my word, ketones. And the ketones are used for energy in the body. Now, I said ketones because there are three different ketones. There is acetoacetate, which is the primary ketone that the body produces because this ketone can form ATP, which is energy for your brain. From the acetoacetate, acetone is spontaneously released. So if you metabolize fat as fuel, you will get acetone in your breath. Then we have another famous ketone called the beta-hydroxybutyrate, which in normal language is the blood ketone. This is formed by excess acetoacetate and stays in blood. It's a small buffer of energy. It's like 15, maybe 15 calories if you are really in high ketosis in the old school. So how do we measure ketosis? Well, you see we have the fatty acids into the liver creating the first ketone, acetoacetate gets into energy, right? In the beginning, we have, when you're not fat adapted, really, you get the excess acetoacetate into the pee, into the urine, yeah? After a while, when your body gets fat adapted, it can, it's more efficient to store the excess acetoacetate as beta-hydroxybutyrate. Now, from the acid acetate, you get acetone, which get out through your breath. It's not used for energy. A very small fraction, but you can ignore that. So, the issues with measuring this, what is this? Well, if you look at the urine, you have to manage your fluid, how much you drink. Because if you drink a lot, you will dilute the concentration in your blood, in your urine, yeah? So, if you don't drink, you get higher in ketosis. No, it's not like that. 
And after that, that patient, when your cells know how to use the fat and the ketones, the excess acetoacetate in the urine will most likely become blood beta hydroxybutyrate instead. The issues using measuring blood beta hydroxybutyrate is you could have a vitamin B deficiency or mineral deficiency or just high blood glucose. Type 1D people, type 1 diabetes, when they have a high glucose, they cannot produce enough NAD to make, to, to use the, the beta hydroxybutyrate. So it's just rising. And so could you. You can have a B vitamin deficiency, niacin, or, or something else that makes it hard for your body to use and create these ketones. And there are very small amount of ketones, uh, energy, and it can be used at any time. So 15 calories, run up and down the stairs a few times, and these are gone, could be gone. The breath ketones, they're not perfect, because the measuring procedure is that you have higher concentration in the bottom of your lungs. So you actually have to expose your bottom of your lung into the sensor. And I'm sure a lot of you have tested it. Um, first time you do it, it, it's a bit hard. But the good thing with breath testing, breath test testing is that it's, you can do it a lot of times. Right. So if you evaluate in lifestyle, being in ketosis for life, you have to fr measure frequently. And if you're using urine strips, you have to drink a lot, to pee a lot and you will dilute the whole thing. You need a toilet, you, need, you only get trace of ketosis. If we're using blood as a marker, it, you have to prick your fingers, it will cost. You get a trace of ketosis. You get the trace of ketosis with one decimal precision. That's really good, but what does it mean? And it can be used at body at any time. So. Breath. What I found is breath is that you can measure a lot of times. You can measure 100 times a day. When you wake up, before you go to bed, before you eat, after you eat, when you're eating and stuff. But that is really advanced. It's no pain and it tells you the level of ketosis. The other measures don't tell you the level. The more acetoacetate, the more acetone you get. So what is the level of ketosis? Everybody talks about the nutritional ketosis. This is when you eat enough calories. You're not losing weight, you eat enough calories. Some of the calories you eat is stored as glycogen in your liver. The rest is stored as adipose tissue fat. And for that, we need insulin. And when insulin goes up, ketosis goes down. That is why they call this lower end of the Spectrum, nutritional ketosis. You eat enough and you still run on fat. Therapeutical ketosis is more than 30 ppm. This is where things are happening. This is where most people lose weight. This is where your glycogen store is getting low and your glucose is getting low and your ketosis is getting really, really high. This is when you feel euphoric. This is really where you want to be. This is for weight, weight loss, therapeutic use for epilepsy, for cancer, for uh, narcolepsy, for, 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 for things like this. So is ketosis only for epilepsy? Well, as I said, well, it's, it's another fuel for your brain. You get a mental clarity. If you are a, a company leader, maybe you need a mental clarity for the whole conference. Uh, it's stable blood sugar. You don't get dips in your energy level. Lots of energy available. I got, probably got 80,000 calories. I can live on water for weeks. Uh, therapeutic use, as I said, type 2 diabetes, cancer, narcolepsy, and sport, increased endurance. 
more and more people doing triathlon, biking, running, taps into the fat by priming their body cells to use fat as fuel. So they can top the fuel or the engine off with rocket fuel in the last end of the race. And they recover better. If ketones are available after a workout, they will be used instead of protein. So you don't breaking down your muscles as much. And you get a better focus. Even Formula One racers are using ketogenic diet to be able to stay focused for two hours when they're driving in 250 kilometers an hour. They cannot get low because they didn't have a snicker in the car. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And, uh, and I can definitely attest to the ketogenic diet. So it's one of my own personal secrets of how I keep myself more high performing throughout the day. But I want to ask you, like, uh, the breath ketones, they can be registered by, you know, the breath analyzers as well. So what, what do you say to the police officers if they pull you over and uh, what happens then? Well, a big trick is if the police says blow in this thing, be sure that you are doing a lot of uh, exhaling before. Try to hyperventilate a bit and grasp for a big air outside your body to blow into the meter. <laughs> then you get the lowest reading of the alcohol tester for the police. That's cool. That's cool. Some uh, how to biohack. The how to biohack the police. The bio <laughs> That's They're actually true. tapping into something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and also like we, we had some dinner yesterday with the speakers and uh, there we consumed maybe some foods that weren't necessarily ketogenic. So how did your breath ketones uh, affect uh, this day or what well, kind of measurements did you get? The people on the upgraded dinner downgraded their ketosis a bit, mm. I must say. There was a lot of too much calories, I think. Mm. Um, and they're a bit too sweet. Right. Really. But uh, you're still, let's say, keto. Yeah, in still ketosis. in ketosis, but low ketosis. Lower ketosis, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Definitely, if people are interested, they can, uh, they can still try out the ketones if they like. Or The mouthpieces are finished. Okay. It has been a lot of testing, but um, I will try to find some more. Maybe in the... Okay, okay. That's, yeah. Thank, thank, yeah. Thanks again, Michelle. Thank you.